Hello everyone, this is B-Belt Dan, and yes, indeed, we are back to constructing the Enterprise J in Blender. However, we are not in Blender, as you can probably tell. Uh, oh man, I wish this is what my Blender models would look like, but, you know, this realistic, but, well, maybe not out there realistic, but, you know, you know what I mean. But I uh, decided to go ahead and start this episode just a little bit differently, and... Because of the last episode, I once again have to apologize on that. I thought that I was bringing these screens up, and I thought I was capturing my monitor, but in reality, I was only capturing the just the programs. Every time I brought up the pictures, y'all didn't see it. So I was doing a lot of pointing and talking and all this type of stuff, and y'all didn't get to see any of that. So I decided to kind of start off with this episode to take a look at this underside here, uh, the two shots that we do have of the underside. Actually, I have three, but I'm only really going to use two of them. And I was going to kind of real quickly just go back to show you what I was talking about before we jump into Blender. Um, and also show you what we're going to be working on today. Um, yeah, I was talking about like the underside details um, and also comparisons from what was shown in the episode to what it was, was quote unquote released. Well, I mean, it was released by Doug Drexler who designed the ship. But it didn't. The underside never appeared in the episode. This did. I mean, they Daniel say that they are on the Enterprise J. This is my best guess looking forward because this does look like the underside of the saucer section. So yeah, this is the saucer section. I mean, you can see right there that may be that front portion that kind of expands out. Um, more than likely, what probably happened was is that one person designed this. Doug Drexler designed the whole ship and of course you know thinking well we're only going to see a small portion in the top portion of the ship they can do whatever they want to the underside so there's going to be conflicting designs but I'm going to try to make them match as much as possible you know going first off with the hull plating we do see as I pointed out in the last episode which y'all didn't get to see there is hull plate details along here as you can see and there's these struts going along here so I'm going to be modeling those in to the ship this design you kind of see at the top of the ship i think what we pointed out with the pylons uh the war pylons you know you do see something similar to this so i think that still all works out this is something we don't really see very well at the top section but it's at the bottom section so we're going to throw those in there and these are those windows i was telling you about and now that I'm looking at I was trying to draw individual windows but actually it looks like now I can really get away with making the windows more um, longer lengthwise because it doesn't look like it's individual windows but it looks more like it's kind of like a um, um, I don't know kind of like a skyscraper I mean where the windows look a lot longer you know, like viewports, not viewports, I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm thinking about now, but, you know, um, but they're much larger, you know, panoramic type windows there. So I'm going to go back in and change that. That would help me reduce the poly count of this model. And at the same time, um, you know, it allows me, I could probably put textures inside there and you can really get in and see some of those details. So I'm actually excited about that. But one of the details... You know, this right here, I'm definitely modeling under the underside. Those are the things that I say that kind of looks like phaser strips or, you know, phaser blasters, maybe to protect because the ship is so big. If anything gets in around here, well, you need something to be able to, to blast it. So maybe that's what those are for. Those could be for sensors. Who knows? But that's that sensor dome that we usually see underneath the, the first Enterprise and Enterprise A and B and... Even C, I believe, even has something like that. You start to lose it with the D because they start, that's when they start replacing it with the captain's yacht. Uh, but the detail I was also noticing is that I thought this right here ran straight into this, but if you look closely here, it doesn't look like that it runs straight into it. It looks like it kind of just stops and then it starts shallowing, you know, does a shallow. Um, kind of like this, you know, you go straight, uh, don't look at the background, I mean, look at my mouser, it goes straight, and then it kind of curves up, then you might have a little bit of detail, and then you have this portion here. So, that's what I'm thinking what it does by looking at this picture, 
but y'all let me know what y'all probably think. Um, but yeah, I'm still working on modeling all of this. Haven't got a lot of details on this, as you'll see, because I started working on the backside, and now we are going to go to the next picture. This one right here is a released, now as you can see from Drex Files right here, a released picture from Doug Drexler of the back portion of the ship. And I'm not going to use 100% as, you know, what what we see here. Because, I mean, as you obviously know, I'm doing something different with a secondary hull back here. And you can see there's those details that we see in this picture are missing inside this picture. I mean, there doesn't seem to be that sensor dome, that little center, you know, uh, area with the sensor dome into it, those little struts. I mean, it doesn't seem like that there's, that's inside this. So, because this was never seen inside the show, I'm not going to model this exactly. But I am going to borrow some details on this um, with a few little changes. First off, you know, right here, I think this is... I don't know if this is the main impulse engine or if this is tied into this particular drive, but I'm going to be modeling it and treating it like it is an impulse engine, the main impulse engine of the ship. But it looks like it's kind of pointing downward. And But one thing, though, that I'm going to borrow is that it looks like that the um, right here is the possibly space and cavity where they might keep the shuttle bay. So I originally had the shuttle bay built up here and not but uh, they built they had it kind of built in right there you know and I'm thinking now I'm probably going to go ahead and do that I'm going to go ahead and switch my modeling of my shuttle bay from up here back down to here so I'm going to borrow that idea but you know with the impulse engine pointing almost in a downward angle like that you know I don't know I don't know if that gives off any really kind of thrust I mean I guess it would to propel the ship but if that is on and the ship is flying by that you know i could just see ah, you know gets shot <laughs> the shuttle could get shot downward so i'm going to straighten that out a little bit as you'll see what i'm doing and i'm going to go ahead and delete the or erase the um you know the the shuttle bay area that i had up here and bring it down and mold it kind of down to here because i kind of like that that it's more of an underslung um, you know, hull carrier as opposed to an above hull carrier. You know, it's a, it's a below here instead of above there. I just kind of like that idea. But, you know, the rest of this, mm, I'm not going to be doing... Oh, yeah, and there's more of those hull details that I was telling you about that you kind of see here. And it looks like it's almost the same type of details there. Uh, this one, you get a real good idea of how those hull details look. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm going to have to go back and probably even change, modify some of those uh, details to kind of give this particular type of look here. And as you can see, one, two, you know, that's all one big piece. Then there's another big piece, and that kind of almost repeats. Uh, this section here, these little details will probably be bump mapped in, but this I will actually model. Yeah, it looks like that's all one big piece. Looks like that might be all one big piece. So I'm going to change that, the top portion to kind of reflect that because I'm pretty sure that it looks, it's almost a mirror image of it. And we see some extra little hull details, but actually it looks more like that's the Aztec design that was just quickly slapped on and it was, you know, it was quickly mapped onto the vessel, you know, using maybe, you know, world coordinates rather than individual face count or face poly counts or uh, I can't talk today. I I know what it is. I just can't think right off the top of my head of what it is. But yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to work on this back portion today with those little details. And I'm going to cut right back out and jump back into the model and I will see you there. And here we are back in Blender. As you can see, as I was talking about, I went ahead and started kind of blocking out this back portion here, this impulse thruster. I have it, let me uh, put in wireframe, I have it kind of going into a slight downward angle, but not terribly, to try to kind of somewhat mimic that issue, but I'm not going to make it, it looked more like in the picture it was going down that way. This one is still going this way, and you know, 
still going backwards a little bit uh, but I'm gonna need to move some stuff around first off as I was mentioning I'm gonna go ahead and remove this area here so I'm gonna do that first delete these vertices And another thing I'm going to need to probably start to do, slowly start to curve that downward. I'm going to go ahead and go into another camera angle here. Okay, reduce this. Oh, give me a minute. There we go. Okay, let me go ahead and, and put that to solid and put on the overlay here. And you can see, you'll see why. I'm doing that here in a minute because yeah this obviously you know signifies the end part of the ship right there I need to kind of move this a little bit so what I need to do is I need to put this more along the lines of there let me go into more long lines of right there. Yeah, I might have to make it a little bit smaller too. Well, it's actually gonna be down a little bit because I'm going to curve this into this. So actually, let me go ahead and put that back where it was at right now and let's go in and delete some of this oh and this is uh, by the way in case y'all are interested I'm actually filming this on Wednesday so it's right two days the day right before Christmas Eve two days before Christmas hope y'all all did y'all's Christmas shopping I know I haven't uh, well, I've done most of it. There's still a few things that I need to get. Um, uh, namely for my kids and also for my wife. They, my wife was pretty bad at not really giving me any kind of hint. She's one of those type of people to where she really likes to, if she wants something, she'll just buy it herself which makes it difficult for me to try to get her anything. Oops. Okay, there it is. Yeah, you know, because once again, if she wants something, she'll just go ahead and get it herself. So it kind of gets me to, you know, asking, you know, well, what is it that I, you know, um, I'm trying to think about how to do that. Oh, I know how, I know how I'm going to do this. Let's go ahead uh, and there we go. Oh, let me go. Can I do? Yeah, let me do this real quick. You know, because anything that she tells me, ooh, I want this so bad. Well, you know, she goes out and she goes ahead and she buys it herself. So, you know, and so when it comes around to birthdays, Christmas and stuff like that, you know, she already has everything that she's wanted, but I got a couple of, I had a couple of good ideas that some other people gave me about what to get her. So I'm going to go ahead and get those. I still need to get them. I'm going to be buying them today. I really hate to, you know, be a kind of a last minute shopper, but, um, sometimes it's what you, you got to do. And, you know, the kids, um, you know, their Christmas shopping, I'm not going to try to, I'm not going to spoil anything for those kids out there that still believe in Santa Claus, but you know, I, you know, there was still some shopping that needed to be done for them. So, uh, but yeah, hopefully y'all haven't quite waited to last minute like I have. Let's see. Hopefully this turns out the way I'm hoping it would. And even if it doesn't, well, I still saved have backups of this 
Oh, and as far as presents are concerned for some of my, some of the other people that, you know, some of my other family members, um, I actually, I actually pro made presents for them. I'm one of those people to wear, oops, you know what, let me do this. Okay, that looks like that might work. I might do some adjusting, but yeah, right there. Yeah, I'm going to do some serious adjusting, but that gives me the starting point because now I'm going to move this. Let's go into the top. Right there. And. That's going to be pretty close. So that's where the impulse engine is at. And so far it doesn't look like it's interfering. Oh, let me delete those as well. We don't need those anymore. And voila, still need to figure out a way how to combine those together. But one step at a time. Okay. All right. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to join this mesh, this one mesh to this mesh here. So I want to select, let me go into wireframe and make sure that I did that Right. Where is the center of this? Oh, yep, that's it. I'm going to have to recenter that. Yeah, better not do it now because if you recenter and when you got, especially the mirror, the mirror modifier on it, it can really mess it up. So I'm going to just leave it as that. But um, yeah, this ship's already starting to get to a pretty high poly count. That's not actual polys that I'm modeling, but that's the polys that the subsurf modifier is drawing. Because if you go in edit mode, you can see all those, you know, all the true polys. But yeah, it's starting to get high up there. So now what I need to do now is and I like to do this in solid mode is I'm going to go ahead and now I need to try to start slowly blending this into aha found the culprits I was noticing in the image there was some Looked like there was some uh, anomalies inside the mesh. I thought I fixed that already by putting it to where in the modifier, the mirror modifier, where you clip. But apparently that doesn't work on all these for some reason. So I just clicked them, click G, and it seems to snap together. There we go. So that gives me a more definitive. Good. And so now if we was to render that, oh yeah. Okay. It's starting to look pretty good. Okay. Let me go ahead and take it off, put it back on the solid, go back in edit mode. Now I'm going to have to start adding in some extra edge loops here. And I'm going to join everything from this to this bring everything from here to here so make sure we go to at last now i'm gonna need to add in a couple of extra there we go at last control r bring those to right there LM, Alt M at last. There we go. All right, let's do this in top down mode. Okay. So, Christmas is right around the corner. 
Um, New Year's is coming right up. Do any of y'all have any New Year's resolutions that are coming up? Uh, I definitely do. And if you noticed in the last episode, I mentioned that I've got some other stuff that's coming out. And um, they all have to do with uh, New Year's resolutions. Um, if you look at some of the, if y'all have looked at some of the other videos on my channel, you know that I have um, other hobbies that I like to do. Um, you know, you've probably seen, especially quite a few of the movies that I have that I have made. Um, just recently, we did one that, uh, well, actually, I didn't make it. It was actually my son, my youngest son, that's actually made it. But I used to make movies when I was much younger, and I. Uh, making some movies now I don't do it as much as I used to back in my younger days but every once in a while I still kind of get the oh how should I probably put it you know that that little the itch so I've kind of gotten the itch again so I'm gonna be working on some stuff uh, but hopefully y'all are gonna hopefully y'all would like it if y'all are watching these because y'all are ah that's not what I wanted for mostly the Star Trek videos uh, well you know don't judge too quickly go ahead and continue you know when they when they come out watch them and see what you, see what you like you might actually like them a little bit okay but yeah I'm gonna be starting on some of that. I'm going to have to do some serious cleanup work around here, but starting to take shape. You know, let's go ahead for right now for the sake, delete, remove the sharp edge on that. Do we have two edges here? I don't know. But, yep, there it goes, starting to kind of mold it together. Let's see, shift E. Zero. Hmm, interesting. I'm going to have to figure out why that's doing that. I don't think it's drawing two edges. It's not acting like it's drawing two edges. Okay. Whoops. All right. Hmm. Well, okay. I'll look at it a little bit offline. So now I just need to figure out ways to just kind of combine this all to this. Which, here, let's tell you what. Let's go ahead and do two more. Oops. Let's put another one right there. Let's just go ahead and finish this all up. See how that looks. It's putting on a tons load of extra lines, which I do don't know if I'm going to need on this, but it'll give me give me some good uh, areas to detail. All right, yeah, and I think if I go ahead and let's do that right there. There we go. Now let's see how that looks rendered. Yeah, not too bad. Looks kind of clean, so I need to do a lot of cleaning. Or I want to try to make it look a little bit more organic to where it kind of molds down gently rather than that sharp little edge. But uh, it's 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 turning into something. So let's go ahead and since we got that, let's take a look from the side and modify this a little bit. And then we'll call it an episode because now that we got that, ooh, let me remove, no, not that. Because now that we got all this, and let me go ahead and turn this off, go into the back camera. 
see, control zero. There we go. All right. So we're talking about from here, we're going to be adding in. Let me just do that right there. That'd be easier. We're going to start adding in the um, shuttle bay in this area. So shuttle bay would be right around in here. So that goes back into there. And right here is the shuttle bay. So this area will need to bring that back even further further for right now. Let's go ahead and grab these as well and do the same thing. Um, actually, let's do this. Yeah, let's do this instead. Let's go ahead. Do that. And extrude scale on the y-axis to zero and put that in right there and oops we got an edge let's delete those There we go. Um, see, we'll make the bottom part of this hull just a little bit more rounded, especially in the back area. As you see, it's kind of flat. But yeah, I think that actually looks out. We'll be a bit of a better idea or better design than what I had originally. So we got all this impulse engine that's going back into here. And then right here, we kind of have an underslung, uh, recessed, uh, docking bay. Yeah. I kind of like that. So it's kind of recessed inside. So it's kind of hidden into the ship. So they fly in, in between these, the portions of the ship. So we could probably even borrow some of those pylon ideas just kind of have it to where like these gently mold into here then here and then this comes out there's pylons this continues to go straight let me show you what I'm meaning about that if I whoops nope if I grab this and I edit let's go ahead and select whoops let's just do just vertices so we shoot that all the way back and this is just temporarily there we go so we shoot that back. And another thing that I probably want to do. Oops, got a couple of extra vertices hanging there. Let's delete those. Let's just do that. Right about there there we go okay almost done call cut that and like that and shuttle bay will be in that area. Let's go ahead and go into rendered. And something like that. Let's go ahead and put this, give that, that the same material, Starship Gray. And there we go. So it still needs a lot of cleaning up, and I'm just roughing out the areas. But, yeah, that just gives you a good at least idea. Let's take a look at it from the back. Yeah, that should be plenty of room right inside there underneath 
the impulse engine in order for them to dock some ships some shuttle shuttle bays some dock some ships or what have you inside there so i'll probably make it a little bit more uh, rounded make it a little bit more accessible for some larger even ships um, you know with it being two miles wide it could definitely take some of the smaller federation vessels such as for example like the nova class vessels that we see in uh, star trek voyager um, maybe even like the norway because that seems like that's a um, a small class vessel they can dock inside there as well uh, so yeah we're going to go ahead and call it a day on that um, this will probably be uh, you know actually i was going to say this might be the last episode of the year but i may end up having some time during the weekend to do another episode so we could probably get one out before the end of the new year but i definitely just want to go ahead and tell y'all though before we leave merry christmas to all of y'all hopefully y'all have a good you know happy holidays and everything i said i'll try to get another video out before the end of the year but if not i also want to wish y'all a happy new year and starting on the new year be expecting to see a couple of additional videos from me for on a regular series uh, one of them is going to be dealing with 3d modeling so and it still be in blender but even though that it's involves 3d modeling it's not going to be the it's 90 percent 3d modeling but that's not i'm not going to be modeling just to model so you'll see what i mean by that and the other one it will also the first couple of episodes will deal with 3d modeling uh but it's going to be expanding out into other territories as well just hold on y'all y'all will see what i mean shortly but in the meantime i just want to thank y'all for watching I said leave any comments or ideas or suggestions either on the links below or you can go to blender I'm sorry, sci-fi meshes.com. I have a forum post there and y'all can leave some stuff on there and take a look at some other people's work that's on on that side as well. And I'm eventually going to go ahead and start restart my thread that I had on Blender Artist when I first did this project several years ago. So step by, check by in on that as well. So once again, thank you for watching. This is B-Belt Dan and I will see you next time.